Welcome to the You Matter podcast, where we host interesting people and have enlightening conversations. My name is Ned Burwell, and I'll be your host. Hello, everybody. I'm here with my dear friend, Ryan Beckett from Thamesford, Ontario. We're, we're going to have a, an interesting discussion today. I think we've come to an age where we've passed the threshold of being bound by gender roles. I think we've, we've got to that place in life and we've come to an era where I think it's important to continue talking about what are gender roles and why is it important to transcend beyond and out, out of them. So I wanted to talk to Ryan because he's a guy that I, I think has had a past of being a typical stereotypical male. Oh, totally. That's a good good start on it for sure. Or, yeah, yeah that, that type of past for sure. Absolutely. And and then in in your recent years, you've you've really found uh, a truer sense of self through some realizations you've had, some life experiences. So I'm I'm here to talk to Ryan about that. So maybe we could start out with what, what is it? You, what is your definition of to be a man, and how has that changed from maybe 25, 30 years ago? All right, Ned. Well, I guess. That's a pretty big question to start off with right off the hop there. Um, can we maybe predate that a little bit and just maybe explain a little bit more of my male kind of energy or role or what I, I am as a, as a person? I think that might help define a little bit more of uh, that question and then absolutely ask me it again maybe a little bit later on it. The floor is yours. Perfect. Well, I just wanted to give a little background for, I guess, some of the people that, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't know me or aren't from Tempsford because... I realize, you know, this is a podcast and we're not sure where this will reach in, in the, the depths of the world. So uh, I grew up in the small town of Thamesford, played a lot of hockey. So I carry a lot of that type of energy of of uh, that contact sport, uh, of growing up in a small community, of being, uh, I guess, that masculine role model of that gla- gladiator role for for lack of lack of terms on it. So that kind of background uh, uh, would be into what I grew up with and saw as the strong, strong male. So I guess that gives you a little bit of into your question. That's right. Um, I played uh, junior hockey in the area with uh, a lot of uh, a, a lot of good coaches, uh, a lot of good mentors. Uh, a lot of ones that also had uh, a lot of uh that old stereotypical, the way to do it is bang and crash and go through things, mm-hmm. which I think as males, sometimes that's what we feel we need to do is the only way to do things is just bowl over it and eliminate it. So uh, I don't know if that's uh well, you, that's exactly the male approach or the classic male approach to anything is just, Brute force and and well, those are yeah. Well upon, right? The old, the old, you bring the old hammer out of your toolbox, and sometimes if that's the only tool you you know, it's it's a great tool and it can be used for mm-hmm. a lot of different things. But uh, there's a lot of other tools that you can mm-hmm. <laughs> develop or use that are much more functional than a hammer. That's right. So, and I think that's where some of the bang and crash energy of hockey, and and uh, you know, I was I got to a decent level of it. I. That was an identity that I kept uh, of being a good hockey player. I played on some championship teams. I played with a lot of good guys. I played against, you know, ones that, that made it. I played with guys that made it to pro pro levels and mm-hmm. in different uh, different countries and into the NHL and that. So I have some of those 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 deep deep ties into that. Uh, there was a lot of that mentality and that energy that and that bang and crash that it beat up my body Mm -hmm. there was a lot of uh, a lot of trauma and different hurt and like i'm talking physically and mentally that came came out of uh playing such a contact evolved you know involvement sport so this sort of prefaces the the background of what you your experiences and so in during that time to be a man would be just to Pull that lip over your forehead and just move forward, right? Yeah, yeah, and a lot of it because that was that was kind of what you were taught, especially in the hockey world. Of you played through uh, physical injury, 
Like you weren't supposed to show that you were hurt to the opponent or even your teammates sometimes, because that was part of what was seen as being brave of just, you know, I've had injuries of like physical ones that most people wouldn't get out of bed for. <laughs> and you got guys or line mates that are playing with something worse, right? That's right. So that, yeah, pull your lip up and just go through it type thing and not really, uh, I guess, come come back and see see how that that attitude is 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 good and serving in in some ways, but not just the only way. Mm-hmm. So let's let's circle back to the beginning. Then, yeah. what is your your idea of what it takes to be a man today? A man today. So changing that from that kind of stereotypical uh, vibe. Uh, I, I like the term more of uh, what I see as being a, a gentleman today. So in that term is that I can still carry that masculine energy through that energy that serves me or that defense tactics or different things I learned from hockey of where I'm strong physically, but uh, a much gentler, more compassionate, uh, uh, the gentleman part of it of where you don't have to bring that hammer out in every, every situation. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense to you, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. So, and so other components of leaning into that process of becoming a gentleman. Yeah. You know, we break down gentlemen. It's, it's really about being a gentle man. Yeah. And so what, what has been your process of learning to lean into that aspect of yourself? Well, I think, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of what, uh, I've done is I've had the, I've had the pleasure of, I, I do have a great uh, mentor of mine that was my, uh, my, my grandfather, and he was definitely, by terms, a gentleman. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially uh, in his later, later years, he really encompassed uh, uh, being able to be that masculine role model, but also show that there is a, a side of femininity that can be immersed in with, with a male role model. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was also a very accredited war hero. So he had a very tumultuous time in his life. And uh, he actually did change the course of history through some of his war efforts. Mm-hmm. Uh, in his later life, he tried to bring more of a message of not taking that conflict to the way that it had been in the past. There's other ways to resolve that. Mm-hmm. There's other ways to be, uh, I guess, more of what he was by then a gentleman. Mm-hmm. So he he showed me a lot of uh, a lot of 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 different ways that a man can be a man and not uh, through force. Mm-hmm. So I think that definitely uh, it was a good good way to show uh, a different 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 values. Mm-hmm. And I, I think some of our youth are displaying some qualities that that are expressive of us learning how to transcend, you know, our gender and, and not be caught up in traditional roles or feel that we're confined within those roles. Because I myself, like I I wasn't in the sports, but I I felt like I had to conform and, and be a man and my ideals or ideas from that were driven from the ideas of society, my friends, the way my father act, acted back then. Mm-hmm. And so I would just, I, I felt my place was to mirror what I saw in the world. But uh, when I, as I learned how myself, how to become a gentleman and a, a gentle man, I started to, in lieu of mirroring what the world said that I needed or had to be, mm-hmm. I started to become more of who and what I truly am. Yeah. I started to learn how to, how to listen to that, that part of me that transcended my mind. And I started to listen to the part of me that, that spoke beneath my emotions. Right. And, and furthermore, I started to look at my emotions as if they were information, but not, not who and what I am. And because as a, as a, typical classical male where we're told not to have emotions and the only emotion that's generally acceptable is anger, you know, to, to have that aggressive, those Absolutely. aggressive emotions. 
That's that's well, that's that's very much what uh, what we were brought up with in our age bracket, and mm-hmm. uh, I definitely um, think for part of part of what was uh, available to me, um, I did do uh, a specific uh, journey with a friend uh, down to Mexico who. Uh, has the availability of some different plant medicines that mm-hmm. what I found with it and what's going on in that that community and uh, what relates to a lot of people that have uh, suffered some of the traumas that I would have went through in hockey mm-hmm. uh, or, or soldiers or different ones with the repetitive uh, hitting and noises okay. and, and, and different things with that. Um, some of these new... Uh, well, they're not new plants, but ways that they're bringing this, uh, the healing to people as you experience plants, which it happens to be psychedelic. So that's not mm-hmm. necessarily for everyone. Uh, uh, at, at, you know, different points in their life. Uh, some people may feel attracted to that. Uh, it was something that I felt uh, was an opportunity for me to try and, uh, go down and deal with some of those physical traumas Mm -hmm. and they're finding that a lot of people like myself or soldiers or different, different people when they experience the, the plant medicine are able to have a better thought process. It, it, for me, it was like almost, I guess myself, it felt like there was a cloud of fogginess that was relieved from, from doing that, that part of, uh, of uh, my trip down to Mexico and that helped bring back a a different consciousness that allowed me to work, work through, uh, through things uh, differently from a different point of view. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that helped uh, change, change my perspective of looking at things. Uh, And it was interesting how in that time in my life that uh, your, your book came across kind of my way the one of the uh, the awakening was the the one that really spoke to me at that time and by reading your your uh, delivery of messages through there there was a lot of connections that i felt i'd made for myself uh mm-hmm. partially through that that journey and trip to to see uh, that friend of mine down in mexico and then just through life lesson and mm-hmm. um i don't know it just all seemed to come together <laughs> that's <laughs> right you didn't i didn't have to live through some of those old patterns or that old uh, bang and crash mentality. Now to relay that kind of forward into what I see in some of the youth and some of the, the children now of uh, I see that there might be that opportunity for them with not having as much of those general roles kind of forced, forced down. I don't know if force is the right word, but it was, that's just more what we kind of grew up in. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you. Well, that... they seem to be demanding that they're they're insisting that they're not going to conform. On, yeah. on a lot of levels. Yeah. Not so much that we're we're not imposing that so heavily on them, but but rather, I, I from what I see a lot of the times, and it may not be all the cases, but they're they're just saying no, no, I'm not participating in that. Yeah. And I I, I think that's that's refreshing to see. Yeah, you know, and I I do remember you sharing your your experiences about your reflective journey uh, down to Mexico. Yeah, and I, I share similar experiences in the way that as as a when I was going on retreats and gaining that reflection, mm-hmm. it, it was such a valuable tool for me to to awaken to a deeper part of myself. And I is that necessary for everybody to to go away, have an experience and come back. Maybe, maybe it is, maybe it's not. But I, I think for me, pulling back out of my own situation and taking time to go on a retreat where I, I became very vulnerable and aware, hyper aware of who and what I am, stripped away of all this personality that I had gained and and I think that mirrors so much of my experience. Mine just happened to be that, uh, you know, I had the plant medicine available to me and that was a path that I, I ended up with for that experience. But 
very much it doesn't need to be that it's a plant derivative that gets you to that state it could be so much it could be through breath work it could be mm -hmm. you know different spirituality work uh that's through right. uh there's so many other modalities that uh that just happened to be where it really helped reset kind of my brain is the way I feel. And then now it's opened up a lot more avenues where I'm more receptive into, you know, different meditative work, uh, different, uh, like uh, even to like Wim Hof as a, the ice man, his, his, uh, uh, he set many world records up, up North in the, the cold waters. And I know cold water therapy. So bubbling right now, but that's something there that people, can get into those different states of consciousness with, with a different modality. And that's, it's all part of one, like a one connectiveness, I guess. Yeah. So we've sort of merged now from talking about transcending gender roles to um, how to position ourselves to become more awakened. Absolutely. And, and I, I think to, to transcend a pattern there, there has to be some sort of an awakening and what the catalyst yeah. is for that awakening will be different for for everyone. But if I think if if you're a a male and you're feeling maybe misplaced or out of sorts with the status quo of of your life, that maybe it's it's there's a nudge in there that your your spirit or your soul is calling for an awakening. And I I think it's it's important to. What's coming at you? What's showing up in your life? We were just talking about this on the front porch. Absolutely. I love how Ryan is always conscious of what's going on around him, what's coming into your life, and and you're just open and entertaining it. doesn't mean that you're <laughs> you're easy and gullible. No. It no. just it means that you're receptive. Yeah. And and I think that's a that's a great tip for people that that are, are feeling maybe subdued by their lives or feeling subdued by the, the status quo of how they've behaved all their lives, but inwardly they maybe feel differently. Yeah. Well, totally. And that's where uh, I guess it, hopefully they can find what it is to kind of push them forward into the next, the next level of openness. Cause it, you know, I know it can be, uh, I could see as, as sitting as a male, it can be difficult to talk about feelings. <laughs> that's what, that's a lot of what, cause we're again, back, we're told to, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're taught a lot of times to repress them. Or again, like you said, where anger is kind of sometimes seen as the only acceptable one. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's not very good. That's not good teaching. That's yeah. not what we should be, you know, showing the youth or, or displaying to them. So yeah, that's uh, it's good to try and come up with a different mindset. Mm -hmm. And hopefully some of those people that are on the fence of that, they kind of feel that in their gut of, well, oh, I want change. Hopefully they can start seeing that there's, there's other avenues out there. In, in my first foray into uh, exploring my emotions outside of the context of anger, we're not graceful, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty awkward, you oh, know, yeah. in, in a, I, I sort of felt out of sorts to, to drop just that one emotion. But I, I think it's such a necessary journey to, to you know, if, if you're feeling like you want change or you want to have some forward movement, next time you come up with the same old experience that you've had a thousand times or the same old emotion mm -hmm. coming forward, whether it be sadness, anger, frustration, passiveness, whatever that emotion that's coming up into you, maybe dial it back a little bit and say, okay, underneath that, what am I feeling? Yeah. What am I feeling underneath the sadness? Is it, is it really sadness that I'm feeling? And, you know, have you done some of that in your, your journey of awakening yeah. and oh. self-discovery? Totally. Absolutely. Like that's, that's a lot of the, the self work is going back and, and figuring out for me anyways, of where that touches in an emotion of, okay. And sometimes I find that, uh, well, I guess it, you can, yeah. What, where's that emotion? <laughs> Why is it coming up now? And then trying to figure that out is very key. Uh, if you get to that level, then not attaching to that emotion mm -hmm. would be kind of another, another way of, of, uh, of, uh, 
dealing with some things. Um, like I, I've watched you uh, in the last few years here go manage and work through a divorce. Yep. And we we classically think, you know, that through a divorce, it, guys, we just hold this tough guy, stiff, stiff upper lip kind of persona. But um, I've watched you manage your emotions quite well. I haven't lived with you or so I, I don't I haven't wrote out the whole experience with you. And, and I'm sure you've gone through all the gamut of emotions. But yeah. but the balance that you've had through this journey of separation, which throws so many balls in the air, yeah. whether you're initiating a, a separation or your partner's initiating it, it's going to be difficult. I initiated my separation with my ex-wife, yeah. but it, it was still a, an emotional journey that I had to go on. Yeah. And, and there was a lot of work on the other side of that decision to, to leave. And I think the, the best way I can describe what really helped me or really worked was um, I'll go back to my journey down to Mexico. A lot of what I dealt with mentally was either, uh, you know, I guess a battle or a really deep look into ego and being able to confront whatever that was for me or whatever stigma was behind it and being able to really release the ties to that. Mm -hmm. So for me, that I guess a good way of, if I went down there as the old, you know, hard nosed hockey player, I was able to release that attachment I had to being that hard nosed hockey player. <laughs> that guy okay he yeah he served a purpose yeah. he's 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 up and gone so being able to re release that part of my ego uh really served me to be able to release other attachments of who my ego would be mm -hmm. so that goes into okay well at one point yes i was uh you know a husband with a wife well during separation and divorce well <laughs> that title disappears mm -hmm. so that part of ego uh wherever that lies with you, you're confronted with it. So I think with that uh, work I put in in Mexico and, and to, to backtrack it a lot too, Ned, there was a lot of uh, work that I did before going to Mexico with myself and previous partner that, that really was very fruitful in the end. And that was, again, just looking back at self yeah. of getting into who I was and being able to uh, figure out what parts of those serve me or, or don't mm -hmm. anymore. So one, maybe, maybe you could sum this conversation up with uh, your concluding thoughts and maybe point it towards giving somebody advice for, or another male yeah. advice to how, how do we reach into that, that deeper aspect of ourself of who we really are? How do we become a gentleman? Oh, I, I guess for uh, for myself, it was being able to look deep within myself, and a lot of it was uh, come to peace or give myself forgiveness for some of the the way I carried myself in the past. Mm -hmm. And part of that forgiveness was, yeah, I used a hammer for a lot of things, uh, but that's okay. That's not that's not me today. Mm -hmm. So that uh, if I'm offering up advice to other guys would be is if you feel like you're in that type of uh, spot for yourself or that there's nowhere else to go other than kind of, you know, that, that fight and punch and, and that hopefully you can have someone in your corner to talk to that allow, you know, allows you to see that that's not just the only way. Mm -hmm. uh, there's lots of books. There's lots of things out there. Um, for me too, uh, it was a time in my life that I was able to get rid of, you know, some components like alcohol and that really didn't help my thing. So some of that is some people might find eliminating certain things in their life. That's a good start mm -hmm. because you can have a different perspective to carry forward. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know if that's really given answers of where people no, to I, totally run out and go to, but absolutely. I guess it's so individualistic that. There is. And there's people there that are there to listen. That's why you're doing these podcasts. That's why you're putting out some of these platforms that there's lots of avenues that you go on to a Ned Burwell site or 
or that, but it connects into a lot of other people or places that might be more fitting mm -hmm. for people in certain search situations yeah. to find, I guess, that outlet that they need to help them right. overcome what doesn't feel good anymore. Mm -hmm. And they know it's not supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. So my, my concluding thoughts is that I'm going to answer the question yeah. I asked Ryan. Yeah. At the beginning, I asked him, what, what is your definition of being a man? I, I feel like the, the, modern, the most modern definition of being a man is, is having, having strength and courage to do all the things that men do, but also having the ability to reach into compassion and, and gentleness when needed. I think being a man is is become in this day of age is learning how to balance our mind and emotions, balancing our emotions so that they become tools that help us connect great more deeply with other people and to connect deeply with all the situations that arise in our life. I think being a man is is more about learning how not to be a stereotypical man and to to be a real man is to stand up in, in your soul because the truth of it is within my soul, there's no such thing as gender. And to, to transcend this idea that we are this physical manifestation walking the earth. Yes, we're in this body, but we're not of it. So to be a man today, I think ultimately we need to transcend this physical idea that we are this body. Hope that's some food for thought. Hope everyone's having a wonderful day. I appreciate the time that you've taken to listen. Share this with your friends. Share the, this message with anyone you feel needs to hear this. Take care. And bye. And thanks, Ryan, for right. being my guest here oh, today. No problem, buddy. Anytime. Yeah. Always enjoy our chats. Absolutely. Thank you for taking time to listen. Stay tuned for our next episode of the You Matter podcast. Have a wonderful day.